Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, come on, you can give it up for the Lord. If you're hungry, you can come with all our being. If it had not been but for the Lord, who was on your side and my side, where would we be? Thanks be to God, He made a way for us. And we can say, escape by the power of God. Certainly want to thank and praise God for our covering apostle, the apostle Frederick Washington, Dr. Pamela Washington, Mr. President. Amen that covers the ministry to our assistant pastor, amen, and our little 
under the weather, but we thank God so much for him yeah. and to our supplicant bishop, the bishop yeah. Colin Gaines. Yeah. Amen. Our bishop of the Jones, amen. And certainly to Bishop at Gates, amen. Yeah. To Pastor Miller and Miller, praise God. Yeah. Pastor Wright and I, praise God. Yeah. Pastor Tompkins, praise God. Yeah. All the elders, God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Harrison, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Morris, amen. Yeah. Yeah. All the evangelistic teams, amen. Yeah. We thank God for you. Our speaker is on his way. He said he's 10 minutes away. Right. Amen. 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 He didn't get the news, I guess. No, sit down. <laughs> and we, we do early and we got to go. He'll be better tomorrow. Praise God. Amen. We're so happy that you came out tonight to be a part of. You will not be disappointed because he is a man of God. Amen. Amen. And he is precise in his speaking. Yes. Amen. We certainly want to thank God for him taking time out of his schedule to come and be with us. Amen. Another time in this COVID-19. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be named in the number. Hallelujah. Could have been dead, yeah. hallelujah, shout out. Could have been sleeping in the grave, hallelujah. But God still gave us another chance, praise God. And for that we owe him a praise, hallelujah. For that we owe him a glory, and we owe him the honor. For all the things he has done in our lives for our lives, amen. He's worthy of our worship. Can't nobody do it like Jesus. Can't nobody treat us like the Lord. They can say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Look like we ain't glad no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Bible said there's going to be a great song in the day. Oh, Lord, my praise, Lord, help me to stand. Oh, glory to God. I want to be one of those that fall by the wayside. Amen. I want to be able to keep, amen, a mindset and keep an a, a attitude of worship and coming to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care what's going on. Amen. 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 For us to still be able to come to the house of God. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's an honor as well as a. You know you ain't been good. You know God's grace and mercy brought us here. You know it ain't because of what you've done. It's because of His grace and mercy that we all here tonight. Just to lift up holy hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Power! 
suffering. Somebody give them a mask. Excuse me. Who need a mask? Amen. Now that don't stop you from praising God. You know that, right? Yeah. That don't stop you from giving God glory. Amen. Don't let no mask stop you. Amen. Amen. But at this time, because we're under, amen, still under a watch, a curfew. Amen. Amen. We're going to bring this man of God on. Amen. This man of God is not a stranger to the Revival Faith Center ministry. Amen. Neither is to you, the people of God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They come. Amen. He comes often to the Revival Faith Center ministries. Amen. And he prophesies. And not only that, but he let us know what God is doing. Amen. Amen. And what the Lord is letting him know to let us know that we would prepare ourselves if it wasn't for the prophet of God. Amen. Many things we would have run into. But God had a man of God that came and gave us instructions. And because we followed the instructions, we're here now. 
Amen. After our convocation, he prophesied every year for last year that he prophesied uh, what was going to happen at convocation. And trust me, whatever he told us, that's what happened and how it happened. So we was able to prepare ourselves. Amen. 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 But tonight you're in for a treat. I'm not going to prolong the time, but I'm going to, amen, present to you. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is going to introduce introduce amen present to you none other than the prophet bishop george scott hallelujah come on give that bigger praise than that i know you got a mask on but can you breathe through it can you breathe through it what well, the bible said that everything that have breath Praise ye the Lord. So if you're breathing through the mass, you can praise God through the mass. Come on. You can shout through the mass. You can holler through the mass. You can dance with the mass. You can shout, scream, jump, holler. Hallelujah. Long as you're breathing, you're all right. I said long as you're breathing, you're all right. Hallelujah. Ain't no mask gonna stop my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you have a mask on when you woke up this morning? Or who woke you up? Did you wake up telling him thank you? And when you put the mask on, tell him thank you again. I just need about five people just to give God a praise with the mask. Just let, let the devil know. Ain't no mask gonna stop my praise. Ain't no mask gonna give, stop me from giving God the glory. Come on. Ain't no mask. Somebody shout hallelujah. Well, we got to get protocol. Protocol to do. We thank God, of course for the woman of God that I've been knowing for some years now. She's ageless. Every time I come, she's getting younger. I, I, I might even get that water. I don't know what kind of water she's drinking. She's drinking something. I know you, you got something under that mask. You drink it. Every time I come, you're getting younger. We thank God for the woman of God, the Apostle Janice. Come on, give God praise for the wonderful woman of God. Precious woman of God. A woman of God that has stood the test of time. She don't bite her tongue either. Y'all know that, right? Don't y'all know that revival? They said it. She don't bite her tongue. She takes a licking, but she keeps on ticking. She reminds me of my mom. My mom passed away some years ago, but my mom was like Apostle Dillon. She'll, she'll beat the daylights out of you and then make you a cake, make you a cake. Whoop you up real good. They said, boy, go on there and get some cookies. Mommy, you got to kill me. Go oh, get some cookies, boy. Get some cookies out of me. So they know, how to, they know how to kill you and heal you at the same time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise for possibility. Again, I'm glad to be here. I know we on curfew, so we're going to get in the word of the Lord. I want everyone quickly to open your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 16. The book of Matthew. If God would lead me, I would deal with this COVID thing and tell you what's all been happening. And is, was this of God? People want to know if this God or is this the devil? We don't know who it is, do we? We don't know it's God, the devil. The, I tell you what, whoever it is, God's still in control. In him we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. Something great's going to happen tonight. Stand on your feet, rest on your feet. Passage of scripture, Matthew chapter 16. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Matthew 16, verse number 13. When you have it, give me two big hallelujahs. Hallelujah. 
Bigger than that. Bigger than that. I know you got a mask on. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came unto the coast of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do men, underline that word, men, say that I am? And they said, the apostles, his disciples said, Some say, Somebody say some. Some say. some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say you Elias or others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Evidently, my brothers and sisters, that was not the correct answer. It was not the correct answer because he said, and he said unto them, but whom say ye, the disciples? Yes. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, Christos, the anointed one, the Messiah, the son of a what? Of a living God, not dead. A son of a living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. Bar-Jonah, Bar means the son of, he was the son of John. Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath have not revealed it unto thee, but my what? Father, Father which is in what? Heaven. Now I want you to get this book, because you'll get the context of this revelation I'm giving tonight. He said, Simon Paul Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you, but who? My, father. my who? My Whose father? father? Whose father? father? Jesus' father, our father. My Father, which is in where? Yes. He revealed it unto you. Yes. Now watch this. And he also said unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I feel God already. Upon this rock, I will build my what? Underline, my church. I will build my church. And the gates, I leave this shit go by of hell shall not not hope not not pray not shall not prevail against it and i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth hmm, shall be bound in and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be what? Loose in heaven. I want to give you a powerful revelation for the end times in which we're living. But I want to address this subject matter in the posture of a question. And I believe if we answer this question, there's going to be great deliverance for God's people tonight. Are y'all ready? Those that are watching also. And this is the question. What is the misunderstanding between the church of God and the kingdom of God? What's the misunderstanding? What's, what's between this church? Are we the church? Are we the kingdom? This is the elephant that's in every church. It's in every one of your mind. Because some of you say, we're not, we're not the king, we're the church. And it's almost as though, Bishop Gaines, that the church and the kingdom is fighting against each other. Because one say they what, and the other say I am, and the kingdom say I am. So who is it? You can have your seats. We're going to address this tonight very quickly. But it's going to be liberating to your spirit. Because some of you are having this debate within yourself. And those that are watching, they don't know what's the difference between the church and the kingdom. Are we, are we the church or are we the kingdom? Are we the church or are we the kingdom? See, people don't want to deal with this because you're going to be dealing with religion, sacred cows, but the word of God is clear on who we are. 
and whose we are. Amen. Are we the church or are we the kingdom? <clears throat> What's coming between us? Mm. Amen. What is the competition? What is the, the battle? What is the misunderstanding that makes us say, we're the church, not the kingdom, or we're the kingdom and not the church. Let's get into it. Are you ready for it? Amen. Are you ready for it? Amen. We understand that Jesus started out this. This is the first time this is mentioned about the church, right here in Matthew 16. It's when Jesus asked, who do men, who do humanity, who do the secular world say I am? I ain't talking about... I ain't talking about religious folks. I ain't talking about my disciples. I'm not talking about the ones that, that understand the scrolls and the, and the Hebrew writings. And who do the world out there, the one that you go to work with, uh -huh. the one that's got you wearing these masks, yeah. who do they say that Jesus you serve is? Yes. 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 So, the disciples said, some of them say, like some people at your job, some people you work with, some of your own family that goes to other churches. Some say, you Elijah or John the Baptist or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. The thing about it is they did give him a spiritual definition or title. They called him a prophet. So that did distinctive, distinctively separated him from just an average man. Yes, yes. They said, you you wanted John the Baptist or uh, you, you some Elijah from the dead. So Jesus said, okay, I heard that. They did separate me least from them. Yes. They recognized I'm not one of them. Uh -huh. I'm a prophet or yes. I'm somebody that has spirituality. Yes. But that wasn't the correct answer because no. if that was the correct answer, Jesus would have said, okay, and yes. kept on going. But he said, now, I heard what man said, but what do who you say I am? Watch what they said. He said, uh, Simon Barjona said, Thou art the Christ, Christos. Christ means Christos, yes. uh, 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 Messiah, Massage, Messiah. It, it talks about the Messiah who will come and deliver the children of Israel. So, uh, Messiah, where we get the word massage from. I'm just going to do this real quick because i got to give you the background on this. When we get the word massage, you know what massage means? Yeah. When you get good at massage, yeah. it means to be smeared on oil. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Christos, the anointed one. Yeah. That's what it's really talking Messiah, massage. Yeah. Yeah. It, when God massages you, it's, 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 he rubs on you or smeared and his anointing is on you. That's what they said about Peter. Well, these are ignorant men, but we know they've been with Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. How do they know? The anointing. The anointing. That's what separates us Come on. Yes. from the world. Yes, yes. Thou art the Christ, the Son of a living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou. You blessed, Simon. You got blessed. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. So right now it said, flesh and blood. You didn't get that from your intellect. I feel God here. You didn't get that from your flesh. You got this from who? My heavenly father, which is in heaven. And he said unto him, I got to hurry now. Here we go. Thou art Peter, Simon bought John, son of John. And upon this rock, I'm going to do what? Talk to me, church. Come on. Build what? Build what? Whose church? Jesus' church. He said, this is my church. But watch what he said I have to do with my church. Because here's where church comes in. Here's where we category church from kingdom. He said, I'm going to build my church. Jesus' church. And the gates of and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now watch this. If the church was the conclusion of the whole matter, uh -huh. he would have stopped there. Yes. Because he called the church something that needs to be built. Yes. 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 If something is being built, it's not complete. Yes. I feel God in here. Yes. 
You got to understand. If the church has to be built, then that means it's not complete. All right, all right. I did. Right? right? And he's, if that was the conclusion of it, the church, he said, in the gates of hell, I feel God here, and the gates of hell shall what? Not this is the understanding of the church. The church total opposition. This is, this is the warfare of a church mentality. Watch this. They understand that their greatest opponent, of, of, of opponent or opposition is what? Hell. Hell. That's what Jesus said. The church's opposition uh -huh. is hell. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. And the gates of hell. So he puts the church and hell in that same category on that same realm. Right. So when we fight as the church that's being built, uh -huh. we're fighting against hell. Uh -huh. The only problem I got with that Ain't nothing in hell but demons and devils and lost souls. Yeah. Satan is not there. No. He's never been there. But no. well, why are you as the church talking about, I cast you back, Satan, in the pits of hell from whence you came? So if we just have that understanding, see what I'm saying, of that church mentality, all we doing is fighting hell. We call it things demon because that's all we see. So we call the COVID a demon. Yes, yes. We call everything a demon. I rebuke you, demon. And there are ranks in kingdoms. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. How many of us say, say not get, go back to the pits of hell from which you came? he be looking at you like, what? I've never been there. <laughs> hell has lost souls. And demons. That's it. Yes. Satan has never been there. Never. Y'all getting this understanding? Yes. All right. So he says, now I got the church being built, and your opposition is hell, but you're not complete. So he said, now, Peter, I'm going to give you the what? Keys of the what? Kingdom. Somebody shout kingdom. kingdom. I'm going to give you keys to the what? Kingdom. Kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Watch this. Now, the church is built. Uh -huh. Something that is being built is still under construction. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Right? Yes. I don't need a key to something that don't have a door. My Lord, say that. My God. Say that. So whatever Jesus is giving after he said he's building the church uh -huh. must be the completion of it yes. in order to have a key to enter in. That's what he's talking about buying and loose. It's unlocking and locking. Yes. Okay. So he said, I'm going to give you a key that you can be able to lock and unlock. Yes. You can't unlock a door that hasn't been constructed yet. Okay. You, Amen. Amen. You still being built and the door ain't even there yet because you, you don't even have the frame established. No. So here's the difference between, good God Almighty, here's the difference between the church and the kingdom. Uh -huh. right. Can I tell you what the Lord. misunderstanding is? Yeah. And let me tell you what's coming between the church and the kingdom. Uh -huh. Mentality. No. Yeah. Well, well. He was on it, Apostle Dillard. Your mind. The mentality. It's the mentality of God's people. If you got the church mentality, what is a mentality? The mentality is the way of your thoughts, the way of your thinking, the way you think, the pattern yes. of how you think. Yes. Yes. It's your mindset. Mindset means set, S-E-T, that's a position. That's not a condition. That's a position. Yeah. When something is set, if I set this here, that's position. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. So he said, thank God for Dr. John Mohorn. Come on, give God some praise. He told me he was coming, and I'm glad to see him. Come on. Come on, Dr. John Mohorn. Come on, give God some praise for the man of God. Great man of God, my friend. So let's go now. 
See, I wasn't even gonna preach tonight, but you got this pray. He done burnt John Mohorn in here. I got to holler now. <laughs> I wasn't even gonna preach. I, I was just gonna teach. <laughs> but y'all ready for some more? So it means the mindset. Somebody shout mindset. mindset. It's your mentality. Yes. This is how you can understand the difference uh -huh. between the church and the kingdom. Yes. The church is being built. The kingdom is already established. Yes. You can't give keys to something that has not a door. Amen. When you get to the kingdom, it is an established work of God. That's why he gives you keys. Keys is to open, close, yeah. to bind, and loose, to lock, and unlock. But he didn't give that to the church. He only gave the church the key to prevail against the gates of hell. Hades, hell, lost souls, and demons. Satan has never been there. Never. 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 And even when they go, they go, the Bible said, Book of Revelation, going for a thousand years, they're going to put him in the pit. He ain't even going there then. Come on, somebody. So all we see in the mindset, our mentality, we call it everything a demon because that's all we know is hell. But the kingdom is a greater maturity of the mentality. Somebody shout mindset. Your mindset is what's going to cause you to shift from a church mentality to a kingdom mentality. And this is why we've been defeated even with this COVID thing. We're calling it a demon. This is not a demon, this comes from the kingdom of darkness. This is from Satan's kingdom. And we're trying to call a COVID a demon when it's from a kingdom. Churches can't defeat a kingdom. A church cannot defeat a kingdom. Kingdoms come against kingdoms. That's why if the church was enough, Jesus wouldn't have never had to mention the keys of the kingdom. Why do you say if the church is enough, he should have just stopped right there? Mm -hmm. But why he said, say, I to give you the keys of the kingdom? That means there had to be something greater yes. than what the church is. So he said, I got to give you some greater ammunition, a greater rank, or a greater authority. I'm just going to build you up. I'm going to edify you in the church. Everybody get prophets, apostles, teachers, five whole minutes to edify, to build up the church to then come into that perfect stature. You know what the perfect stature is? The kingdom. Why? The church, I'm going to break it down this way. Jesus said, it's my church. Who is Jesus? He's the son, right? But he said to Peter, my father gave you that revelation. And now I got to give you some keys. So the father deals with the kingdom. Jesus, the son, deals with the church. All the church is, is the son and the kingdom is the father. We're not in competition. It's just we got to come to a maturity. That's like a son trying to come, Daddy, I can whoop you. I don't, I, I'm not with you. I'm my own man. No, you still my son. Whoop me or not, you still my son. And there's something about a father anyway. They got that key. They got that wisdom. You've got that strength, but they didn't got that wisdom. So he says the kingdom of God is like the Father. The church has to grow up and mature. They have to let it shine. Change their mentality. Your mindset has been governed for so many years in the institutional church. But all the church is is like a son that has to mature into a father. So the church and the kingdom is the same thing. It's just a maturity. It's the church that has been perfected.
corrected. It is the church that has been full grown now. You know what it's called? The glorious church. That's what he's coming back for. A glorious church without spot of blemish. Kingdom deals with glory. I feel God. I got to go, Dr. Mayhaw. Kingdom deals with glory. Church deals with the anointing. It's a total difference. That's why you rebuking and casting devils out and they ain't going nowhere because some of that stuff, Satan in a sense from his kingdom. And that you got to take authority of with the kingdom of God. We've been resting in the anointing, but God's shifting us now through this day that we got to begin to walk in the glory of God. Somebody throw your hands up and shout glory. Glory is greater than the anointing. I said glory is greater than the anointing. It's a higher order. It's a higher rank. It's a higher authority. Anointing means you got to be smeared. You got to be rubbed. You got to be massaged. Anointing takes application. That's the way anoint people consecrate pastors and bishops. That's that stuff. That's that anointing stuff. You got to lay hand, consecrate. Glory don't need application. Glory is just a manifestation of who God is. All God. None of you. Come on, somebody. It's all God. And whatever God says is locked, it's locked. And Satan in his kingdom, God is the king of kings. The Lord of lords. Can I go deep and get him out of here? Y'all ready to go deeper? Go to Luke chapter 11. I'm finishing up. Somebody shout, the kingdom of God. The church of God. We're going to get this misunderstanding together. It's our mentality. It's the mindset. You got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, we in this church traditional. What you mean, a prophet? We don't have to call no church no more. It's the church. It's still the kingdom. It's just the maturity of it. It's still the church. It's just the king. When you grow and be perfected, you come into the kingdom mentality. You still can be the church, but the kingdom is in you. I'm still my father's son, but my father is in me. I'm of him. And there'll come a day when I'll become a father. When I was a child, I feel God in. I speak as a child. But when I got old, when I matured, I speak as a man. I put childish things away. In other words, my mentality changed. Paul told them, the apostle Paul, who operates in the kingdom of God, he told them, he said, listen, I would come to give you meat. I want to give you something strong. See, the church... The church so pacified, similar, they like milk. Paul said, I wanted to come to y'all church. He, 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 he founded a third of the New Testament churches. He said, I birthed y'all. He said, I want to come to give y'all some kingdom meat. But your mentality can't take it. It'll choke you. It'll kill you. So I got to come to y'all and bring y'all some milk. Because babes desire. What? They just, they, some of them just want milk. They only know it. Some, some milk ain't even sincere. Yeah, they just want to hear some milk. They don't even know it's not sincere. The Bible said desire the sincere milk of the word. But you got to grow with meat. So watch what happened. Luke 11, verse 20. Let me show you something real quick and then we get out of here. I feel God in here. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The mentality of the kingdom. Luke 11. I'm going to show you in the scripture how this thing works. Luke 11, verse 20. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? Yes. I said, are you there? Yes. This is good right here. Apostle Mohan. 11, chapter 11, verse 20. This is what he says. If Satan 
also be divided against the, the uh, 18 verse, I should say. If Satan also be divided against himself, how should his what? Kingdom. He put Satan in the kingdom, not in hell. The church deals with hell. He says Satan has a kingdom, not a church. Are you listening? Amen. He said to what? What did he say? If I then cast out devils, he said, if he's casting out devils and it was done and he cast the past, watch this. But some of them say he cast out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. Watch this. And others tempting him saw that he said, watch this. But he knowing their thoughts, somebody shout thoughts. Oh. He knowing their thoughts, their mentality. Jesus knew their mentality. Why? He said unto them, knowing their thoughts, every kingdom divided against itself. Every kingdom that don't recognize that it's the fulfillment of the church, it has a mentality. Every kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So the church, which is the kingdom perfected, is divided. Because some people don't want to talk about that we ain't the kingdom, we the church. Now the kingdom is divided. Now it cannot stand. Because the church and the kingdom is the son and the father. It is the perfecting. It's to be built, but only when you build and fully construct the building or edifice, then you got a door, then you need keys. You don't need keys when it's under construction. You're going to walk all up and down there. You don't need no key. Do you need a key, Apostle? If you, if you build in the house and they lay that foundation and you, you go in there walk all up and down, they tell you, here, there's going to be the stairs over here. It's going to be all there. But there's no stairs there yet. It's being built. That's why when you're a son, babies need milk to build their bones. That's what the church is. It's the baby. It's the infancy. It's the son said my church. So he's the son. He said my father giving you the keys of the kingdom. That's the father. It's the kingdom. Yes. Right. Jesus said if you see me, you see the father. Yes. That's what he, said. he said I do what the father do. Mm -hmm. But if the church is paralyzed in the mentality mm -hmm. to stay a child when we're fighting a kingdom you will not be victorious. So your mind now becomes confused. You're rebuking devils, but they're not leaving. You call it COVID, we rebuke you, you demon of COVID, and it's still running loose. Maybe because it's in the kingdom category. And you got to shift your mentality. I feel God in here. Y'all ready for some more? Y'all yeah. ready for some more? Yeah. And he said, if I by Beelzebub cast out devil by whom your son, there it go, whom your son cast him out. Okay. Therefore shall they be your judge. <laughs> Watch this. But I with the finger of God cast out devils. No doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. He said, I don't have to use my whole hand. My finger. When a son try to prevail against his father with his whole hand, both hands, the father with his wrist can use a finger. The Bible said a king rules with his eyes. I remember when I was young, my dad was a pastor, and we sit on that front row, and we start acting up. He didn't have to do nothing but look at me. Everything shut down. He had to come over there and hit me. He just looked at me. He ruled with his eyes. Yeah. Hallelujah. God ain't got to chastise you all the time. If you chastise, that means that you're not a son. You don't receive chastisement. Are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready? Luke 12, 32. Let's finish. Let's finish it off. Y'all getting anything? I'm going to preach in a minute. Are you ready? Luke 12, 32. Watch this. But rather seek ye what? The kingdom of God. 31. And all these things shall be what? Seek ye first the kingdom 
Hallelujah. And all these things will be what? Added, Added unto who? You. Unto who? You. Unto you, right? This is the 32nd verse, and I'm finished. Fear not, little flock. For it is your father good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes. Every time kingdom is mentioned, father is father. mentioned. Yes. What do you call the church? We got shepherds, pastors. They are flocks. Yes. He tells us right there there's a difference between the flock and the kingdom. Yes. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you what? The kingdom. The kingdom. Then go sell the bags and all this. Now I'm going to finish this up. Let me see. I got some more. I'm going to stop here. Holy Ghost says stop here. Here's where we are. Our mentality. I feel God. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. I'm coming. I'm coming. Our mentality has produced your reality. Your thinking. It's either causing you to excel or sink. It's the way you think. It's your mindset. Your reality is shaped by your mentality. As a man thinketh, oh yeah. As a man thinking. Now here's where you got to understand the difference now. It did not say as a man thinking in his head. Because that's what we think we think at. But he said as a man thinking in his heart. So is he. That's the spirit. That's the centrality of your soul. Your heart. Your spirit. The Bible said when you have a mentality, it has to be a mentality of spirituality. We've got to begin to embrace the kingdom mentality. And we've got to let go of the church mentality. It's time for the church to grow. This ain't competition. It's recognition. He's trying to say, they said, Jesus, show me the Father. Jesus said, you don't recognize? That if you see me, you see the Father. There's no difference between the church and the kingdom. The church is being built. The church is being perfected. The church is being mature. And when the church is mature, then it becomes kingdom minded. I feel God here. Let me go now. I'm going to tell you what's happening now. And the kingdom is always about business. The kingdom is always about business. Must I be about my father's business? Jesus said that while he was yet a child. He was operating in the kingdom. He went to the churches. He went to those scribes and Pharisees and began to teach. And they were blown away. How does a young boy right here talking like that? He's talking like a father. He, talking, he said, don't you? And they looked for him. And he said, what you looking for me for? Don't you know I'm about my father's business? I'm being perfected in what I've called and chosen to do. Every time we deal with the kingdom, it's got to be about business. I'm going to tell you why you live like you live, why you have, why we broke, why we struggle. It's our mentality. Because the kingdom is a business mentality. Whatever that soul is. I shall surely read. God is not mine. As a man sows, the same shall reap. The Bible said the kingdom is like a seed. Can I preach it like I feel it? That's planted in the ground. And it begins to grow up. And it begins to expand. It begins to have leaves and branches. And the birds lands on the branches. So what God is telling us now is that the kingdom must prevail. Somebody shout kingdom mentality. 
Shout kingdom mentality. Say, I got to shift my mentality. I got to grow up now. I got to begin to perfect the way I've been thinking. I've been thinking in my reality I do not like. If you don't like your reality, change your mentality. Stop rebuking demons and devils. They got nothing to do with this. This is the kingdom that's come. Let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let it come to me. In other words, let there be a transferring I put it in, of the kingdom mentality that I can grow up from this church mentality. I'm tired of just coming, praising God, sweating. Come on here. Talk a devil, go loose here and still go home broke. Go home and pay, pay my bill. Go home, I can't have no happy marriage. What's going on here? Your mentality has been minimized. But you got to let the devil know I got the kingdom mentality. And I'm getting ready to do the business of God. That's why Paul the Apostle said to the church of Philippi. Y'all read this all the time and don't understand what's being said. Because every time you get broke. Every time you run out of money. Every time you can't pay your bills. Here's your scripture that you like to quote so much. But my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Come on somebody. According to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. So where is God's riches? It's in glory. But let me back up a little bit more because you keep saying that scripture but your needs still not supplied. What's going on now? Apostle Mohammed we quote scriptures and still get me evicted. We quote scriptures they still repossessing our cars. We quote scriptures and we still being foreclosed. We quote scriptures and we can't pay our church buildings. We quote scriptures and we're still sick in body. What's going on? Our mentality has to rise up now and take care of business. So Paul was telling the church of Philippi, you got to understand, Paul birthed the third of the New Testament church. Paul was the father of the church of Corinth, the church of Ephesus, the church of Philippi, the church of Rome. Paul was the father of those churches. But when he came to Philippi, your scripture, he was telling the Philippine church, no church communicated with me concerning sowing and giving and receiving, but you only. I got all these churches under me. I built all these churches. I got a whole organization of church, but none of them communicated with me concerning sowing and giving but you only he said you're the only one that did it so, so he told them my God shall supply your need he wasn't talking to the church of Rome he wasn't talking to the church of Ephesus he was talking to the church that understood the glory that understood the kingdom giving and receiving that's what business is about receive. How can I give and not receive? You don't have a business mentality. You're still in that church stuff. You want discounts. You want bargains. You're trying to negotiate with demons and devils. And you ain't got to negotiate with no demon about your house being paid off because this is kingdom business. And God said with the finger of God, I can cast out a devil. The centurion told Jesus, I'm a man under authority. You don't got to come to my house. But all you got to do is speak the word. Because I know authority. I know my rank. I've got a mentality that understands authority. So you don't have to go 
don't like to let the church folks. You want the pastor to come to your house. You want the pastor to come to your hospital room. You should have enough anointing and understanding of kingdom. Apostle Mohan, you ain't got to come to the hospital. Speak the word. You ain't got to come to my job. Speak the word. You got the authority of the kingdom of God. That's why, church, we don't understand the power of the leaders that God has given us, especially when you have apostles and prophets, because Paul was an apostle, and he said, whatever I bind, be bound. Whatever I loose shall be loose. Somebody jump on your feet, lay your hands on your head, and say, God, give me a transferring of a mentality of business, of kingdom. I'm tired of thinking like the church. I got to grow up now. I got to grow up. I got to stop renting and owning. He didn't tell the children of Israel, go in there and rent the land. He said, go and possess the land. That's ownership. That's business. Come on here. That's kingdom. Come on, somebody. You remember what they told you? Moses. He said, Moses, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. You're my deliverer. Am I right about it? He said, you're my deliverer. And he stood before the burning bush of God. And the bush burned, but it was not consumed. The church thinks when you burn, you burn out. Ain't no burnout in kingdom. We don't burn out. We burn it up. And we keep on burning. We keep on going. We keep on preaching. We keep on prophesy to hell or high water to COVID and pandemics to epidemics we keep on burning you keep on flaming and you keep going on this ain't personal this business come on here this ain't got nothing to do with your personal I don't care if you don't like me or not the Bible said he told the prophet if they look at you funny don't worry about it I got your back this ain't personal apostle this business I'll look at your name and say this ain't I know your feelings hurt because you got that church mentality. I know you ain't coming back to the church because you got your feelings hurt. That's your mentality. Oh, grow up. Come on here. It's business time. Let's take care of business. See, some of y'all can't even handle this. You're upset now because you're childlike and you don't understand correction. But when we correction, that means God's going to give us an injection to lift us up higher. Somebody shout, I'm going higher. Come on, say change my mentality. So here go Paul. I'm finished now. He talked to the church. He said, I see right now what God has for you, Apostle. What God has for you, Apostle Dylan. I know these, this man and woman of God. They are business people. They deal with business. They know it's more than just the church. Ain't no pastor gonna survive with the church if he's got a kingdom mentality. Because the church deals with offerings. The kingdom deals with wealth. So you know what Paul done? Because he was an apostle, he preached the king in it. He said, I'm done with the church. Because only one of y'all out of 13 understood kingdom concepts of giving and receiving. He said, now I'm leaving the church. And you know who he connected with? Business women. He found a woman by the name of Lydia. Who was the seller of purple. Had a store. And he hooked up with somebody. Y'all don't see. Y'all don't even go this way. He hooked up with somebody in business. See, the church don't even want you to deal with the secular. But God said, that's going to build the kingdom. Because the world is operating in their kingdom system. And God said, I'll let every other kingdom be subdued that my kingdom can be multiplied. So he hooks up with a woman by the name of Lydia. And from that point on, Paul don't mention nothing about none churches anymore as he begins to go into that kingdom mentality. He hooks up with a woman by the name of Lydia, a businesswoman. Then he hooks up with a man by the name of Alexander. He was a coppersmith. Had him a business. Yes. Some kind of way, him and Apostle Paul got into some type of disagreement. Uh -huh. So you know what Paul said? I turned 
Alexander the coppersmith over to sing. He said, I turned him, he's a businessman, but I turned him over to Satan. So that means he put it, he knew he was from Satan's kingdom. He was telling him, I got power to tell Satan to let go Satan over you. So you got to be careful when you start coming against those that have kingdom mentality. And those that have church mentality. Because Satan is greater than a demon. And he said, I'm turning you over to Satan. I ain't operating in that church. I ain't talking about Hades now. I'm talking about kingdom. And it was that that funded Paul's ministry of the kingdom. You want to know why it ain't been working? You want to know why you're frustrated with your reality? You know the reality is, is where you're living at. You can speak in tongues till you're dumb. It ain't going to pay that bill. Long down to the electric company. Speak in tongues till you, till you turn psychedelic. And see that you be this psychedelic in the dark. But that kingdom don't understand who's speaking in tongues. Go in there and tell them, I rebuke you, you demon. Turn my electricity on. Huh? They ain't going to have to send you back home. You stay in there too long, they're going to escort you out. So they got security. This is what we got to understand. There's a difference between authority and power. Y'all ready? Power is power. I have the power to go purchase a gun right now. A nine millimeter, whatever I want, 380, 308, whatever I want, caliber 45. I got power right now to go what? To go get a gun, right? I got that power. But the police got authority. They got the gun, they got the power, just like me, but they got something I don't have. They got the authority to use their authorized. So if you sh I shoot you, you shoot you with the power of my gun. You shoot me, who's gonna get the benefit? The ones with the authority. And God is always on the side. I can pick you, I don't get it. People get it. Oh, see, there you go. I'm just telling you what's happening in this world right now. You got to change your mentality and wire us into the walk of the kingdom life. Are you listening to me? And I'm going to show you how to switch it on. I'm going to show you how you can leave out the church with the kingdom mentality. Because the kingdom and the church is the same thing. You hear me? My son, younger than me, but he came from me. He can't say I don't belong to you. You got my blood in you. It's always the father's blood. That register the children. They don't check for the mother's blood. Come on. Come on. Y'all watch the hairspring and all that kind of stuff. You not the father. See, they don't go to the mother. The blood is validated through the father. That's why Jesus said, if you see me, See, I'm part of the church, but I'm in the kingdom. I'm not fighting against the church. No, I'm not trying to rebuke you because you're talking about kingdom. I embrace you because you're part of me. We're one of the same. The only thing separating us, this is our misunderstanding, our mentality. Just don't
then you get upset and upset and start hating on folks. Why he driving that car? Why he having that? Could it be why you hate no folk? That they understand the kingdom mentality and they're doing business. When Jesus, when God told, I'm finished with this. Stand up there, possible. I ain't gonna come close to this thing. You got your mask on. Just stay right there. When God told Moses, my people are in bondage. My church is in bondage. I got to raise you up as a deliverer. And I need you to go tell Pharaoh. Watch this. I want you to tell Pharaoh. Do what? Let my what? Let my people grow, go and grow. Because they had to get to that promise that. Now watch what happened. God Himself, see, God is His business is a kingdom. He said, Moses, you know what? I can't send you as a prophet. Because Pharaoh is a king. Not only is he a king, but he's a god to those people in Egypt. I can't send you as a prophet, although you're my prophet, because he outranks He outranks you. I can send a church to conquer a kingdom. But God said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you, Moses, a god. I'm going to make your son, your brother Aaron, a prophet. So God had to raise his mentality and say, you're no longer a prophet. I'm not sending you a prophet to the kingdom. I'm sending you as a god because Pharaoh is a god. walks in there not as the prophet but as a god. Aaron was his prophet because all prophets are the servants of God including yours truly. That's why I minister this word for you. Now watch what happened. He comes into Pharaoh not as a prophet but as a god. He said, Pharaoh, let my people go. Now these are two gods. I'm telling you this tonight to open your eyes. This COVID thing, this is a war of gods. This is not a war with church. This is a war of gods. Rank, order. He goes to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. He stood before this God. Pharaoh said, who are you? I know you, you once was a prince of Egypt, but I'm the God of Egypt. Who do you think you're talking to? He told the prophet, throw down my staff. He threw down the staff. I'm finished. He threw down the staff and the Moses staff became a what? See, these are wars of God. See, y'all don't even get this. He's a, so he threw down this snake. This that became a snake. Church folks would start running. Ah, there's a snake in the house. <laughs> that's because that's your mentality. Which you should be thread on serpents and scorpions, but that's your mentality. So Pharaoh, he's a god. He said, I'm supposed to be scared? He called his witches. Called his warlocks and sorcerers. Yeah. They came with them a, a, a staff too, got them a wood, and threw theirs down. Uh -huh. And theirs became serpents. Uh -huh. Now, watch what happened. Now, God's serpent is outnumbered by the witch's serpents. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. there's more than one of them. Yeah. But watch what happens. God's serpent began to devour. I will rebuke the devourer 
for your sake. That's why some of you don't understand when you don't tie that devour is loosed in your life. That's why you can't pay bills. That's why it's a kingdom for Yahweh. So we begin to eat up all of the serpent. Now watch this. God was telling Pharaoh in the God realm, although you can do what I do, I can do something you can't do because I'm in a higher God category. Because the first day, not only could God turn wood into a car, a car, a car, a car, carnivorous, that's car, that's that's car, that's that's carnal, that's a carnal, that's, that's reptile, right? So you take it some wood and turn it into reptilian, yeah. and, and the witches did that too. That ain't nothing. Yeah. But he said you can't do this. Tell your witches to do this. Change the nature of what I change. Because y'all don't even see it. Snakes don't eat snakes. That's not their diet. He said, not only I can change things, I can change the nature of what I change. That's why he took some dirty birds, ravens. Y'all know what ravens are? Those are buzzards. Ravens eat dead meat. Stinking, decaying meat that's been out there for days. They go and eat that. That means they eat that up. He saw his prophet. Come on, somebody. And it was a famine going on. This is kingdom now. This is kingdom now. He said those raven birds, I command you, go take my prophet. He's by a brook. He's got water. But he needs some bread and he needs some meat. So now he tells a dirty raven buzzard to carry, watch this, fresh meat. They eat dead meat and some bread too. He changed the nature. <laughs> when you get this mentality, it'll change your nature. Instead of everything going bad, that that was meant for your evil will change for your good. Instead of you being broke and trying to bustle and bustle to pay the rent. Why y'all arguing all night in the house and fussing and fighting because we don't have this and this is that. God can t transform the thing that you be more than a conqueror. So that happened. And, and then, of course, what happened? Here comes COVID. See, this is a thing of, of, of war for God. God said, I'm going to send plagues. Throw some COVID at you. Come on, this is God. He said, I'm going to start messing with the air. I'm going to turn the water to water the blood. I'm going to bring locusts. And my, I'm going to start dealing with nature itself. I'm God. And after this, you're going to let my people go. So he was trying, they tried to stop the blood from turning water, but the more they did, it just got worse. So God hardened Pharaoh's heart. God had to harden his heart to compete with him. You can't compete with God. He had to harden the man's heart to compete with him. He said, I'm still not letting go. All the blood, the mice, it was light in Goshen. It was dark in Egypt. He controlled the light and the dark. The sun, the moon. And after it was over, he said, listen. Pharaoh still won't let it go. He said, but this last one. This COVID. I'm going to hit them with a pandemic. Y'all quiet. Surely. He's going to let them go now. But even he sent the what? Death angel. God said. Come on. Death and life is in the power of your tongue 
and out of the abundance of the heart. Not only do a man think, but he speaks. Spoke yourself into where you are. Because you think that way. You think you'll never be prosperous. You think you'll never have a husband. You think you'll never be a millionaire. You, you think that way because you've got that mentality. So as you think, you speak because both of them come from the heart. Never be happy. I ain't going to never get this. I can't get a job. I can't get this. Can't get healed. That's because you speak. So he left. Watch this. Watch this. He said, I'm going to send the deaf angel. Well, watch what God does with the deaf angel. He said, y'all go sprinkle some blood. He said, they're going to quarantine. He said, they're going to quarantine. I want you to go and sprinkle some blood over your doorposts. That's what keys need. This ain't something being built. This is something already established. You got the house. It's established. Put some blood on the doorposts. Every entrance, every exit, every opening, every closing, cover it. With the blood. And when the deaf angel sees the blood, he can't go through it. Come on, somebody. It's impenetrable. You can't go through the blood. Not even death, devil, Satan, nothing. COVID, nothing. You can't go through it. You got to go over it or around it. But you ain't getting in it. Other us, our mentalities, and they let them go, right? But that was from a what plague? What are they calling the COVID? Is it a pandemic? Is it a plague? Is death around? Is death around? Oh, not just in America, around the world. He's shaking every kingdom in the world. And God said, he's going to let them go. But see what he did with death? Watch this. Awesome. Even with death, he told death, don't kill everybody. Just kill the firstborn. He even changed the directions of death. He put death on an assignment. Don't kill the girls. Don't kill the mamas. Don't even kill the daddies. Kill the firstborn of every family. This is a war of God. See, y'all don't even. He made death assignment. He said, You can't touch nothing but the firstborn. Even Pharaoh's. And he'll let you go then. And he did. Now I'm finished with this. When they let him go, they let the people go, didn't they? Now watch this. When they left, God said, now it's time for some kingdom business. I'm going to show y'all how to conduct business. Egypt is the world system. Egypt ruled the world. He said, I want you to go to every Egyptian house and I want you to borrow. Sound like trade, sound like transfer, sound like business to me. That's what Wall Street is all about. That's the stock market, trade, borrow. That's what you do in banks, borrow and loan. Lenders and borrow. Borrow from them because they understood that kingdom mentality. They said, yeah, you can borrow it, because we understand if you borrow it, I'm limited to you got to pay me back. But God knew they wasn't coming back. This was paid for 400 years of funding. See, some of y'all been broke for so long, it's time for you to get paid. The reason you can't get paid, your mentality has enslaved you. He said, deal with kingdom. This is a kingdom. Go borrow. And they borrowed all of it. The Bible said they spoiled 
Egypt. There was nothing left, right? 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 They took all the gold, took all the wealth, took everything. And Pharaoh let them go. Y'all read, y'all see the Ten Commandment movies? I'm going to tell you what you're thinking in your church. I know you, you ain't going to say it now, but this is what you've been thinking all your life. You didn't know about the Ten Commandment movies and about Pharaoh. This is what you've been thinking in your mind, mentality, church mentality, all your life. I was Baptist, I've been at it too. I thought Pharaoh was chasing the children of Israel to bring them back to slavery. And that's what you was thinking. You see the Ten Commandments. Oh, they better run. They start getting fearful. Oh, Pharaoh's coming to get us. Pharaoh wasn't coming to get them to take them back nowhere. That's why he was going to run them into the Red Sea. He was coming to get his wealth, his glory back. He could care less what happened to them. You don't understand. Kingdoms, glory is their wealth. That's why now, stand on your feet. After this pandemic, God said a suddenly is getting ready to happen. that by For your ministry, for your life, for your business, for every one of you that will shift your mentality to the kingdom. He said, because I'm getting ready to do a sudden. Woo! If you don't understand, this is why you can't understand something. Listen. He said, the wealth of the wicked shall be what? He didn't use the word he used the word transfer. Right? Transfer to the what? The hands of who? Apostle Mohan. Apostle Dillard. You and I. It's going to be given, transferred into our what? The wealth, the wealth of the world. The wealth of these business billionaires and millionaires. Yeah, I know y'all be praying, but y'all don't, don't have the mentality to get it. Because the church deals with offering. Buckets, yeah. plates. Yeah. If somebody wanted to give you eighteen million dollars right now, he would have to take a a a, 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 a truck, a eighteen wheeler, bring all that money in here and drop it down. That ain't how the wealthy works. The wealth don't work by no offerings. They work by transferring, wire transfer. When you start getting up in the, see some of y'all don't even know about it. When you start getting up in the millions and billions of dollars, they ain't coming through no bank with no, give me $500. That stuff is transferred. Wealth is greater and glory than money. That's what God said I'm getting ready to do. Transfer. I'm a wire money. Not by offerings. It'll take a zillion offerings to get $18 million. He said, but I can transfer. You watch and see how the wealth of the wicked, these men, these wealthy men, they're going to see because God's going to bring glory back to the church because our mentality is going to shift to the kingdom. And they're going to come and inquire of us like they did with Moses. Pharaoh said, Moses, come back in here. Because you got the glory of God on your life. They're going to call your apostle. They're going to call some of you. Don't be afraid of the secular. That's the wealth of the wicked. God going to transfer that stuff. You ain't really start dealing with currency until it's transferred. Heavy money. Glory money. is transferred. Not put in no bucket. Amazon. Amazon. They are trillion, trillion, trillion dollar company. You know the CEO make a year two hundred and fifty million dollars. It's all in the paper. They kingdom always broadcast what they get. The church is the one. You get upset when people get something. They broadcast. They they CEO gets two hundred and fifty million dollars. 
million, billion. Billion. Not billion, excuse me. It's the B, not the M. That's right. 250 billion. They make a trillion. He's making this a year. And we sitting up here with this mentality that we get a two dollars. We done sacrifice. That's what you got, that's what you have. But your reality has been shaped by your mentality. Well, as you think, you speak. As you speak, you think. Because out of the abundance of your heart, that's what's coming out of you. Hands are lifted tonight. God. transformed by the renewing of your mind. It ain't gonna go away because you're rebuking the demon. You already know that ain't working because it keeps coming back. Maybe it's because your mentality hasn't changed your reality. But tonight it's gonna happen. Lift your hand, how many ready? How many ready for the kingdom mentality? Amen. Come on. How many is ready for the kingdom mentality? Amen. The mind of Christ. Amen. The mind of God. Amen. The mind of the word of God. Amen. It's time to do business. Amen. I don't care about you getting offended. This ain't personal. It's ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. This got to do with your faith in God. Let thy kingdom mentality come upon your church. Shift us into a higher mentality of authority. We are the sons of God. It may not appear what it would appear, but when we see him, we're going to be just like him. Put both hands up. I heard this in the Holy Ghost. God spoke this to me. Many times when God speaks to me, because it's so personal and dear, this quarantine had me with God. I've been, I thank God for it. To tell you the truth, I do. Because it got my relationship back with God. We were, we were so busy in church. I was flying everywhere, every week, every month. And I didn't have that time of relationship. God said, I'll tell you what, we're going to put you in quarantine. Now, me and you going to get our relationship back together. I'm going to restore it. That you can hear from me and walk in your true prophetic. And you can teach the people how to shift their mentality. And watch and see how suddenly. They was in one accord and suddenly come. One mindset and suddenly come. This is what God told me, Apostle Bohan, and to every one of you. He said, Prophet, my son, as I shift the mentality of the people, I'm going to let them begin to understand kingdom business. I said, how are you going to do it? He said, what did I do with Jeremiah the prophet? He said, I told Jeremiah, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see tonight? I'm talking to everyone. If God will come and stand before your face right now, what do you see? I ain't talking about in the flesh. I'm not talking about in the kingdom mentality. What do you see? He said, I see an army tree. He's dealing with the prophet now. He's dealing with that revelation. He said, I see an almond tree. God said, you have well seen. You didn't see sick. Sick and well is two different degrees. He didn't say, you, you seem sick. You seem well. Then you know what he said after that? I will hasten my word to perform it. I'm going to speed it. I'm going to expedite because of your sight and your mentality. 
And I asked God about this. God said, tell them. And I did this in Alabama a couple of weeks ago at my spiritual son church. And I said it and things started happening. It was crazy. And I never heard, I've been in ministry for many years. I never heard God tell me this to this in this quarantine. He said, tell the people to start sowing a hastened seed. Seed is the word. The word is seed, sperma. It means seed. When he said, I will hasten my word, he said, I'm going to hasten the seed. Yeah. Yeah. God said, tell them now. Watch to sow a hasted seed with the mentality of the kingdom. And it's going to come back expedited, suddenly, immediately. So I did that. I was in Alabama. I did that. God is my witness. You can call them tonight. I'll give the pastor number. People planted that hasten seed. And they came back the next night. All God. It was all God. Folks, say back. I got a check for $1,400. A brother, the, one of the elders said, I got a check for $700. Then they gave me another check that I didn't know was coming for another seven. It just started happening. The pastor, who's my spiritual son, he said, he said, he said, apostle, prophet, he said, listen, I've never seen this. This is God. I said, because God said, we haven't understood that there's a seed that can be planted called hasten. Hasten means to watch and it means to move quickly. God said, when you get this hasten seed, watch me move quickly on your behalf. Watch me. God said, watch me move quickly. I want everybody hands lifted. This is the seed he told me. He said when they was in the, in the upper room, there was 120. And suddenly, hastily, quickly, there appeared tongues of fire. Glory showed them. Because they was in one accord, in one place, in one mindset. And suddenly, I want everybody God spoke this to me. He said, tell all of them with the mentality of the kingdom to sow tonight a hasten seed of $120. He said, there's 120 of them can do it. There's big some come tomorrow. There's some that's watching. Plant that seed. Change your mentality and see what God do. God word will not come back void. Y'all looking around. See, y'all so Preoccupied with this church mentality. They ain't want another offer. See, that's the church mentality of yours. That's why your reality is blocking in. You want to change the things that has been happening in your life, the condition, and change your position? Change the way you're thinking. This is a kingdom seed of 120. I want you to get it and come stand quickly. You can stand six feet apart, whatever, but God told me to do this. Get that seed quickly. God said there's 120 people can do it. Get it quickly. Come stand. Get it. Get it. Just get it. And God said it's a hasten. Put that on your envelope. A hasten seed. You that's going to do it by online. You that's watching by online. You want to do a kingdom mentality seed called the hasten seed. They got cash out. Whatever way y'all do it. Put that on there and tell them to make sure they put hasten seed 120. And God said, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to hasten my word. I'm going to hasten that seed. And I'm going to perform it. You watch and see before this week close.